Hello everyone and welcome to another piston creation and today even with Cube Amster. Hi. Hey hey. Yeah, and we proudly present you the probably uh, most compact stopwatch you have ever seen and it's even counting a tenth of a second so it's it's a super accurate super compact super small stopwatch and the best uh, fact is that it is finally a perfect use for the repeater locks this wouldn't be uh, you, you couldn't do this at all without the repeater locks they just make it possible that you can actually stop the time and resume it and it's uh, do this with an accuracy of a tenth of a second so if a, of a redstone tick that's super awesome yeah, and we yeah, that makes me happy as well, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I designed the stopwatch here, and yeah, with the help of Cube Hamster. Um, so uh, I, he helped me with all the some parts. The most work I was actually done by me, but um, yeah, it's still... I forced him to make it four wide tileable. Yeah, that's the point. So without him, this would be five wide tileable because I wouldn't even try to make it that compact. But I did. It took me don't know like uh, fifteen hours or so to because I had to redesign this a lot to get it finally working but you know it's always worth the effort if you finally have the result and let's just check out the clock so if I press the start button you will see that the clock is displaying the seconds and everything else in real time and as soon as I press stop it will also display the tenth of a second um, okay let's just wait a little bit 12.2 seconds and I can reset the clock as well and Yep, uh, so it resets pretty quickly, it takes around one and a half seconds. And you can even resume. So 4.6 seconds, and if I go on. Yeah, it always displays zero at the end as long as the clock running is running, but you can always clearly see that it's displaying the time. And uh, now let's just quickly hook up a contraption to show you that it's actually correctly um, displaying the time. Okay guys, we now added this little contraption here which um, just sends in two pulses into the start and the stop button with a delay of 7 ticks and let's just see what happens. We get 0 0.7 uh, ticks displayed and we can do this a second time. And we get 1.4 seconds. The minimum you can add to this uh, system is uh, 0 0.6 seconds so this should now be 2.0. And once again, and we get 2.6. Yeah, perfectly working. And you can so, reset it every yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's not only a stopwatch, but also sort of a calculator. And it's a highly advanced pulse length measuring device, which we didn't currently have in, uh, in Minecraft. So yeah. <laughs> and it's extremely compact. That's the best part of it. Yeah, so yes. this pretty much uh, uh, covers the functionality of the stopwatch. Let's just quickly uh, look into the design, how it's uh, made. Obviously, I can't just tell you every detail, but just how the general concept is done. Okay, we just started the clock and you see several pulses running through the system here. Over here in this first row, so this is just a tenth of a second, you see a single pulse, which is yeah just uh, cycling through 10 repeaters here. and. Uh, it pretty much is controlled by these repeater locks here, so as soon as you press the stop button, they will just uh, hold the signal. Let's see, QPAMS did it for us, thank you very much. And the signal just arrived over here. This uh, uh, just powers this repeat, uh, this block here, which will power this piston here. You now see that it is extended. And this is just a vertical 4 wide uh, decoder from uh, yeah, this signal to uh, the 7 segment display. And it powers the lines here. You see the black pool is just the controlling of the display. And it actually just triggered at um, z um, point 0.0 seconds. That's why it's displaying playing a zero. But um, yeah, if you resumes and stops at another time. Can you stop the clock one more time? Yeah, yep, you know, there we go. now just uh, stopped it at 0.3 seconds Three. because this row is activated. And if we take another look, I will just uh, resume. Every time the signal arrives uh, at the point zero, uh, the seconds travel one block further. You see the same concept is made over here and um, it just triggers the repeater locks once uh, every time you, uh, yeah, you add another ten, a tenth of the seconds. And the same happens with the tenth of the seconds. Let's see where are they? They are over here. Every ten seconds you will add one of these, uh, you will, you will, the repeater locks will just cycle by once. 
and the same will happen to the next digit. So actually, uh, all digits beside the tenth of the second are tileable. So I could just copy this with world edit and just copy paste another digit to it, and we would be able to count up to ten thousand seconds instead of thousand seconds, right? As it is right now, and uh, yeah, it's so it's uh, even yeah that makes it even more awesome in my opinion that you can just directly copy it, and it works with uh, with. Uh, almost no further uh, redstone wiring um, change, changes, uh, and yeah, that makes it yeah pretty cool. And sure does. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can see some other stuff over here. This is the controlling part. This was by far the most difficult part. I had to rewire this like 20 times till it finally worked and was accurately uh, measuring uh, the time. But now it does work. And I'm proud that I was able to squeeze it into this small space here. <laughs> and um, I pretty much think we covered uh, all the parts of the stopwatch now. 140 seconds. Actually, next time I will just uh, <laughs> uh, measure the time of my video with the stopwatch here, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, 150.5 seconds. Yeah, so that's the stopwatch. I hope you enjoyed the video, you can download the stopwatch in the description of course and I will make uh, the next event calendar project will have this stopwatch inside, that's what I will promise you and so uh, I'm looking forward to it, I hope you would do as well and uh, see you in the next video, goodbye! See ya! One addition for you guys, I added an option to change the way the clock is measuring the signal. So right now, it starts when you press a button and it stops when you press it again. But you can actually, if you remove this block here, toggle so that it will actually just always um, stop when the on the falling edge and start on the rising edge. I added some instructions here as well. So right now, it will always add one second if I press a button because the button has exactly a uh, one second signal length. If I do this with a wooden button, we get one and a half seconds. And yeah, so we can just directly uh, add uh, time with this. And yeah, as, as I said, uh, you can directly switch this, just uh, place this block or remove it to change between the two modes. It's really simple, so you can adapt it if you need to actually measure the signal length instead of uh, just two signal inputs which have a start and a stop button. Yeah, that's it.